Once you've chosen your preset, the next step is to work on your tone compression settings. So I've gone ahead and closed up the presets area and moved the navigator over to one side so that I could zoom in a little bit and see things more clearly. So the tone compression, you can think of that um, as being literally exactly what it sounds like. We're taking all of the tonal data and all three of those source files and we're either compressing it uh, towards the center of a histogram. In other words, we're sort of creating more midtones. We're recovering more details and flattening out the image a little bit, while an image with a negative or very low tone compression is going to basically accentuate the very brightest and darkest details. So that will create more of an overall contrast, but you'll tend to lose a lot of the detail and character in the image. So that's sort of the trade-off uh, of tone compression. And for this image, the preset used a setting of 47%. So this looks pretty good, but it does look a little bit too flat to me. So what I'm going to do is reduce uh, the tone compression by 10 points or so. And then if I need to come back to it later, I'll go ahead and do that. Now, before we get to the method strength, we need to understand what the method itself is. And this is new in HDR Effects Pro 2, the way that they create the method. It's now much simpler uh, than it was before, but maybe not quite as much flexibility. So basically, uh, we've got three settings, depth, detail, and drama. And it's a little bit subjective as to what the first uh, and the third mean. The depth control is basically supposed to create the illusion of added depth by accentuating different contrast areas more than other parts of the image. The detail settings, what's going to create uh, the HDR look for our image? So again, um, I rarely use the accentuated option and I never use the detailed or grungy option. I just don't because it looks, it doesn't even look like a photograph, right? So. Either I'll use accentuated or I'll use realistic, you know, 99% of the time. So in this case, if I go back and forth between these two, I think I actually prefer the realistic because of the difference we see uh, in the water here. Again, I want to keep that smooth water effect as much as possible. Now the drama also works on the contrast in different parts of the image, and it's a little bit difficult to explain. So you just want to go through each of the options and see what type of results you get. In some ways, it's almost like a combination between depth and detail, depending on the subject matter of your image. But I think, uh, again, in most cases, I almost always use natural. On occasion, uh, I'll use deep and almost never will I use dingy, sharp, or grainy. I think in this case, I'm going to use natural. And then from this point, you can use the method strength as a combined uh, effect for all three of these items that we just looked at. So whichever settings you choose here, the method strength, if you increase it, will accentuate that combined effect. And you do tend to have to move the method strength quite a bit to get any type uh, of visible change. And sometimes you even have to zoom in a little bit. So if we zoom in here uh, to 50%, and we crank the method strength up and then way down, you can see a very subtle difference. Um, so typically I'll just leave this around 50% and you'll want to experiment with that uh, on an image by image basis. So from here, we'll go on and take a look at the tonality controls in the next segment.